Be sure to go to FlipSideGaming.com and use promo code 6 for 10% off on orders over $10. Do the same with the Grizzly Gentleman, 10% off at checkout on your fantastic beard products. Or you could shop via the TCG Player affiliate link in the description down below to help support the show. And last, but of course not least, you can go to Grey Viking Games with the uh, affiliate link below to pillage some sweet arena codes. What's up, Planeswalkers? Theric 6, back with some more Magic the Gathering discussion. Uh, so today, I'm going to be talking about some of the cards from the Mystic Arcanum. Um, well, by some, I mean all of them. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the cards that are new to Historic, that aren't banned. Then we'll be talking about the cards that are new to Historic, but are banned. And then we will finally talk about uh, the cards that they've chosen to essentially reprint in this product. So first things off, first things first, we'll start off with Day of Judgment. I am so incredibly mad that this is coming to a Historic because white already has two four mana board wipes. It has uh, Wrath of God, which is essentially just better than Day of Judgment. And it has uh, Shatter the Skies, which it's not technically just worse than Day of Judgment uh, because if you are running uh, at least one large creature, you also get to draw. Um, and if you're wrathing like uh, a low to the ground creature deck, they're typically not going to be drawing uh, anyway. So there's definitely a bit of a, a, a give and take. They're, they're definitely more laterally similar. Wrath of God is almost always better because of the regeneration. Although even at this point, regeneration isn't really much of a thing. But still, um, the fact that white was given Day of Judgment, while black still doesn't have access to a good four mana board wipe. Uh, again, I will reiterate the fact that uh, Languish is fine. Um... Ritual of Soot is essentially not played anymore, uh, and uh, Extinction Event is okay. The fact that we don't have Mutilate or Damnation is very frustrating. When white now has a bunch of options, black has none. Not really. Ephemerate is a very interesting addition. So Ephemerate is a card that I think at some point got banned in... Uh... No, it's illegal in Popper. I thought it was banned in Popper for some reason. Whatever. Uh, Ephemerate is a very good card. Uh, being able to blink something twice, the first time at instant speed, and the second time being free, can be incredibly powerful. Obviously, the way I'm looking at this, uh, I'm looking at it from a death and taxes perspective. Uh, I already have uh, versions of the deck that lean a little bit more into the ETBs. But Ephemerate, right, on, a, uh, on specific creatures, allows you to play this as um, either just an extra blink effect if you need to like end of turn uh, bounce a token producer like uh, Elyrios or the, the blue card from Theros um, uh, or something like that or, or get extra value out of your Knight of Autumn for example um, then you can do that or if your opponent is single target removing one of your creatures you can use this to, uh, to, to, to essentially save it but also in a deck like um Azorius Death and Taxes, you can use this to reset some of your things. So, for example, this works really nicely with uh, Skyclave Apparition uh, because of the way Skyclave is worded. Those are two separate entities. So you can exile something without your opponent getting a token from it and then exile something else. Uh, you can reset your um, uh, meddling mages. So, you know, uh, maybe you, you played a meddling mage on turn two. You only had a little bit of information on what your opponent's playing. You find out that it's a little something different. You can bada bing bada boom, uh, reset this, name something else. Now, uh, that's just from my perspective, but ephemerate costing so little and being a, being two cards for one, really, can hopefully open up some doors to some other interesting ETB decks. Uh, I don't know um, the viability of it, but we might be able to see some sort of like Bant ETB uh, deck that includes uh, things along the lines of uh, Thrag Tusk and uh, obviously Skyclave version because of the, the powerful synergy there. Um, Knight of Autumn, even uh, a card I already talked about. So very excited about this card being added. Gift of the States is an interesting one. Um, it's, it's being added. Uh, I don't think it's going to do anything necessarily. Uh, maybe in Brawl. For what it's worth, some of these cards are, are banned in Brawl. Um, they're different generally to the uh, ones not banned in, uh, I should say, Historic Brawl. Um, I, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure I only know one of them, so I'm not actually going to talk about any of those uh, because my brain is uh, not good. But yeah, so theoretically, if you're playing a white base deck, uh, you can go ahead and um, get to the states in Brawl. 
theoretically, this is okay if the format is super rampy and you're a control deck that has uh, some white, uh, especially because this this doesn't say basic planes. You can grab uh, shock lands with it. You can grab the um, the cycling lands with it. Uh, so things like scattered groves, uh, and then of course you can uh, get some of the triomes. Because this puts them into your hand, it does mean you can use those cycling abilities, right? There, there is some benefit in that in that situation, um, and it doesn't cost all that much. You know, only costing two uh, means that you can make some use out of this uh, pretty easily. Do I think it's going to be a mainstay? Probably not. No. Mana tithe. I can't wait to get a ton of people with this. Uh, Mana tithe isn't necessarily a card that's like going to be super super heavily played. Um, I'm going to try it out in Death and Taxes, although that probably isn't the right place for it. But I could maybe see a world where this is played alongside um, uh, like things like Spell Pierce and whatnot in a like an Azorius style uh, tempo deck. Uh, maybe you could see this like in a mono white style tempo deck. I just don't think mono white has the tools. I think you kind of have to go Azorius uh, if you want to have white in your tempo decks. But I just think this is an absolutely hilarious card that's going to get people. Right, uh, just imagine you're, you're like, oh, I'm not going against a blue deck. Man attack. You're screwed. I love it. I love that this card's coming to historic. I doubt it's going to really do anything to the format, but it's hilarious. Teferi's protection uh, is a lot better for a brawl. I'm not going to lie. Uh, being able to protect everything uh, in a white deck is going to be pretty sick. I, I can't wait to play with this card in brawl. Um, although brawl might be a little fast for it. Um, your life total can't change, and you can't and you gain protection from everything. All permits you control phase out. Um, life total can't change. I'm trying to, f I, I can't think of a scenario in normal historic that can abuse this card, but it feels like there's something, there's something that could be there, right? There, there's possibility that you can do some pretty stupid things by making it so you can't, uh, your life total can't change and all your stuff phases out um i don't i don't know exactly what you could do but i'm gonna enjoy playing with brawl blue sun zenith is actually pretty interesting uh blue sun zenith in the past has been played as win conditions in a variety of decks if you're able to make a large amount of mana then you can um then you can force someone else to draw um this is something that constantly shuffles back in, so as long as you're able to cast it, you can technically never never get decked. Um, I think because they've added storm cards that we'll get to, I, I think that Blue Sun Zenith isn't going to be um, a storm finisher in that way. I think I think this probably is not going to see all that much play, which is a little disappointing because Blue Sun Zenith uh, is something for sure that has uh, seen a lot of interesting play in the past. Brainstorm. This is this is added to historic. First of all, um, I, all of these arts are essentially magnificent. Uh, but I really love this brainstorm. I, I don't know why, but I absolutely love just how clean it looks. Uh, that said, brainstorm uh, is coming to historic now. Typically, um, Bra brainstorm is a very testing card, right? Uh, this is this is a card that you can screw up casting easily. That said. A lot of I've heard a lot of different things. I've heard some people say that this card is um, not going to make a splash in historic at all. I've heard some people say this is going to be absolutely busted. I lie kind of in the middle. We don't have fetch lands as they are in other formats, and that really helps with brainstorm, right? If you're drawing three cards and putting two cards back on top, you're stuck with those two cards unless you have a way to get rid of them, right? So brainstorming can help you find an answer you need right now. But brainstorming uh, in, in other situations isn't necessarily going to be great. Blue-white control, I believe, already plays a full uh, a full four of um, Field of Ruin. You could pretty easily, uh, in, a, in a just blue-white control build, uh, run... What card is that called? Table um, Passage, as well. So you'll have about eight ways to shuffle uh, your library. Is that enough? I don't know. But I, I think Brainstorm is going to be played in these control decks. And possibly in the um, in the combo decks that we're probably going to see. Because this does still dig you three down. And if you really need to keep your combo going, this helps a lot. So I, I, I don't think this is going to break anything in Historic. 
I also don't think it's not going to see play. I think this card's going to see play in essentially control and combo. Um, maybe you play this in... No, you don't play this in tempo. No, we, we need shuffles for tempo. We... I don't, I don't think Tempo can play this. I don't think they can get away with it. Compulsive Research is real interesting. So this feels similar to... Um, gosh, I, I can't even remember the names. I can see the arts. But um, the three mana instant, draw two, discard... Uh, discard uh, or no, is it draw three? It might, whatever, there's one for an enchantment and one for an artifact. I frankly don't care. It's similar to that, except this is for lands. It's sorcery speed, but this can target a player. There's a really interesting card in uh, Historic right now that hasn't been seeing as much play. Based on these cards, I expect Narset is going to make a return. Um, imagine, for example, um, your Narset shutting down your opponent's uh, brainstorms in hand. Um, compulsive Research allows you, if you have Narset, to target your opponent. They only get to draw one, and then they have to discard two cards unless they discard a land. That's if you do it on your turn. If you can find a way to do this on your opponent's turn, well, then they're boned, and they just have to essentially discard two cards or a land. Uh, very interesting card. Uh, for what it's worth, that's, that's gimmicky. I don't actually expect this to be a real player. Um, also, when I look at this, all I can see is the keywork. Like, this, this just is the keywork. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, listen to Koei Cambria. Uh, they're, a, they're the best band ever. Memory Lapse. This is probably going to be, like, the best counter spell at two mana for a lot of decks. Just two mana instant counter spell. If it's countered this way, put it on top of their uh, library instead of their graveyard. This functionally does the same thing as uh, Aether, uh, Aether Gust. Can't hit permanence, but it's any spell. Now, for what it's worth, this does this does counter. So if you, like, uh, uh, Aether Gust, for example, can deal with a Chandra for a turn, uh, uh, the, the six mana Chandra. Um, this couldn't, right? That said, sometimes when you Aether Gust something, your opponent doesn't want to draw it again. This doesn't give them that choice, right? They are going to draw whatever spell you decide to counter. And in many circumstances, one turn is all you need. One, uh, one more draw step to, to get to a, a more permanent answer. Uh, um, maybe your opponent like had a series of plays, a sequence of plays that they really wanted to do in order. You know, turn one, two, uh, two three, four, etc. You you mess with their uh, their their uh, turn three play, and all of a sudden you've put them off their game, and you can leverage that uh, tempo advantage uh, uh, to to kind of just steer the game for the the rest of the the duration. Uh, It, it, it's very interesting because it's, it's a hard, soft counter. They're going to get the card back, but they're going to have to essentially spend double mana on it, right? Imagine, for example, like you counter their four drop. They're going to draw that card. They get to see no other cards, right? Then if they want to cast that again, they have to spend four more mana. You've essentially time watched them, right? They lose a draw. They essentially lose their mana. They still get to attack. Um, it's, it, it can be a very powerful spell. Mind's Desire is interesting. This is a banned in Legacy, restricted in Vintage card. It is essentially only legal in Commander. Now it's going to be legal in Historic and Historic Brawl, aka Brawl, because anyone who plays normal Brawl is a mad person. I, why would you do this to yourself? So, Mind's Desire. This is one of many Storm cards that are being added to the game. You can cast things for free, but I don't see Mind's Desire being the card people are gonna play. I think it costs too much, and I think it just has the chance to not be as... I mean, this is banned in Legacy. Maybe there's something I'm not seeing here. My third eye has, uh, has not yet opened, apparently. I guess I guess you play, a, like, one or two of these in the normal Storm deck. And then, like, if you have a bunch of mana, but you kind of, you're running low on, uh, you like, you have no more cards or, or whatever, then you can cast a Mind's Desire. And then you get to copy 
random things and hope you get there. I guess that's how you do it. I just realized Wizards is giving a storm with a set that has Magecraft. <laughs> that cares about you copying spells. Wizards, why do you... What? All right, you know, I can't complain too much. Tezzeret's Gambit. Uh, this is sick. This is awesome. I love it. Uh, this is a three mana sorcery. Draw two cards. Then proliferate. Um, you have to pay two life for it. Who cares? Um, this is sorcery, which is not the best. Um, you Many people will look at this and say, wait, isn't this just like a worse divination? No, because you can pay four for this instead of paying life. And you're like, but that's still worse. Proliferate is real strong if you have the counters uh, to care about it. Uh, any sort of Super Friends deck in uh, Brawl, gonna love this card. Um, any just kind of proliferate deck is gonna love this card, potentially, right? Uh, it it draws you, like, th for this card, right, it feels like the draw two is the added part, right? Being able to proliferate and draw extra cards, like, at the same time, is fantastic, right? Uh, at this point, maybe there's enough um, proliferate to do kind of an actual... Um, infect deck where like you get a single uh, instance of poison on your opponent from uh finn and then the rest you can essentially just play like kind of a controlling a controlling game don't know if uh, we have all the right tools there but i really do love tez's gambit i'm only th I'm, and I, the things i'm thinking small right like i'm thinking of things like planeswalkers there are plenty of artifacts that have counters and stuff so this is probably even better than uh, than i'm giving credit for time warp there are like five of these that aren't on um, Scryfall right now. Time warp. Five mana, take an extra turn. This, uh, fun fact, this does not go to exile. This, um, this, this just goes to the graveyard. It's only five mana. Um, is it control with the uh, double cast, I don't remember what it's called. The uh, three red red enchantment that copies the first uh, spell that you cast. Right. Play that. Play this. Cool. Uh, you can also, I mean, you could do something with Ephemerate, even. Um, you have Scholar of the Ages, I want to say. Uh, you have Scholar of the Ages. Uh, after you cast Time Warp, obviously. Uh, you cast Time Warp again. Uh, then you Ephemerate the Scholar of the Ages. Uh, to get time warp again, I mean, let me just let me just double check. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't exile the spell, right? Skull, H. I'm thinking of the wrong card. Sphinx, legal, historic. Oops, L does not seem to be the correct word. Is it F for format? Yeah, all right. It's a stupid Sphinx. I I hate everything about myself. Forgot I have to do T for type. There we go. Much better. You, Scholar of the Lost Rope. Uh, you may cast a... Uh... It'd be exile. <laughs> Never mind. <clears throat> Ignore what I said. Um, st I, Still, I'm sure that there are some busted ways to play with this card. Also, you could just take turns. Like, you have this. You have um, you have Alrin's Epiphany, which is essentially just six mana, right? You can make a taking turns deck. I'm certain. Crux of Fate. Well, it's it's not Damnation, but it's actually like a hard, like a hard board wipe. Very rarely are you gonna have to deal with some things staying alive. Right, if you're playing against uh, if, if you're playing against dragons, typically you're going to be playing against alt dragons. Um, there are slight exceptions because some uh, gruel decks do like including a, uh, a hasty dragon here or there. But typically, you're just going to be able to say destroy all non dragons, everything's going to die. The problem with that is this is five mana. In an aggro matchup, if you're playing control, the difference between four mana and five mana is potentially 9 to like 15 damage like it's a lot it's an absolute load and 
uh, I also want to say I don't appreciate that Bolas uh, looks like he's losing in this picture. Um, this is uh, revision uh, revisionist history. Uh, get this stuff out of my card game. Bolas uh, has never lost and never will lose. I'm, look, I'm still going to play it in Bolas control. Like, what do you want me to say? Like, it's still it's still just actual bo uh, board up that just kills everything. Doomblade. Holy crap, Doomblade is back. This is going to be sick. Uh, this is like the, pr the... This has been the benchmark for removal for so long. And many of you who are newer to the game might not realize this, but like... Dies to Doomblade is a phrase because of the, the ubiquity of this card uh, in, in, in Magic's past. A creature that did nothing when it entered was deemed bad just when it died to Doomblade. Because this doesn't do anything when it enters. It's just going to die for two for two mana. Um, I'm, I'm stoked. I'm absolutely stoked. Um, there's going to be situations, because there are mono-black aggro decks, there are red-black decks uh, that have a decent amount of black creatures. There are going to be situations where you would rather this be something else. Uh, maybe Heartless Act. Um, I think technically Go for the Throat would be the strongest card that we could have uh, as just two mana black instant speed removal. Uh, I think I think technically go for the throat is a little bit better. I, I don't think that you see artifact creatures as often as you see uh, black creatures, but still. Um, it is what it is. I'm super excited to play with this card. Um, the issue now is that if I'm correct, and Nissa does see a resurgence in popularity, if you're playing a control deck that likes to draw cards, you will likely need to have some sort of split between Eliminate and Doomblade so you can deal with those uh, Narsets. Inquisition of Causalike. So now we have Thoughtseize and Inquis Inquisition. So the meme deck, obviously, mono discard gets a little better. Cool. We, we have more uh, targeted discard that's that's pretty decent, to be honest. But you know what else gets better? The Rakdos Arcanist decks. Those did not need to get any better. I'm so, I'm so sad. Uh, obviously, like, you can be in situations where um, uh, Thoughtseize, is, Thoughtseize is going to be better because Thoughtseize doesn't, doesn't have, a, you know, a, a restriction. Thoughtseize hits anything. Doesn't that land? Uh... At the, at the cost of two life. This hits anything three or less. And, and a lot of people who, who might not have played with Thoughtseize or Inquisition um, either in Standard or in um, older formats like uh, Modern Legacy Vintage um, might think that this restriction is is way too low, right? Three or less, you're never going to hit those. You will consistently. Like, look at uh, the, the, the historic metagame and just look at the number of cards in decks that are relatively low CMC, relatively being uh, free here, uh, you'll find that a lot of things, a lot of the, f the foundations of decks start at that low level, even control decks, right? You're gonna want to be hitting your, their Narsets. You're gonna want to be, if you're an aggressive deck, you wanna hit the removal. The removal, other than board wipes, obviously, is typically going to be um, three mana or less because your opponent doesn't want to spend more mana to answer your creature than you spent, right? So Inquisition is going to be good in Historic. I don't know how it's going to share. I've heard a lot of people say that Inquisition, like other than very specific decks, Inquisition is going to become the standard and Thoughtseize is going to be like the sideboard option. I don't I don't agree with that. I think that, um, I think that there's enough of an impetus to, I, especially with the amount of new cards coming into the format, I think at least for a while, you're going to want to maintain Thoughtseize. As the, the metagame kind of settles, I think maybe you can switch over to Cosplay, um if if the metagame is going that way, but especially early on, you want you want the the net of thoughtsies. Sign and blood. Uh, this card's sick. Uh, it is two mana to draw two cards. That player loses two. The fact that you can target makes this a kill spell. Um, it's a sorcery, which is unfortunate, but being able to like your opponent is just at two. Die, just boop, die. Um, you obviously in in like a. Um, uh, a suicide black you can play this you know things like uh if you're playing a what is his name just got released into historic uh death shadow if you're playing death shadow this card's great for you it's not the best but still it, it's just two mana draw two cards lose two life all of those things that deck wants to do right and now you have a way to um increase or, or activate the trigger of the uh <laughs> the vampire lord 
what is, not lord but what is his name uh the 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 vampire knight the one mana dude uh player loses four life in a single turn right so you'll be able to shock shock yourself like turn literally turn one play play the the vampire knight turn two shock yourself sign and blood yourself you drawn two cards you lost two life or you lost four total life who cares you now have a, a larger creature right um it's it's pretty sick Target player draws two you might even be able to play this so i've been toying uh, uh toying the idea of uh of mardu burn you might be able to do just red black burn like there's reasons to play mardu speci uh, specifically lightning helix but you could probably get away with just a black red burn that runs sign in blood typically to refuel uh to refuel you to to get more uh, gas in your hand um but also just as an extra just like oh i wasn't able to get there with my burn spells i'll get there with my draw spell right uh, I, I think this card um isn't going to be uh, a game changer but i i do think it's going to make some plays tainted pact this is one of the cards that is banned in uh historic brawl <laughs> two mana instant speed <laughs> this i mean for what it's worth this was last printed in odyssey and it's, it was worth like 84 bucks. So if nothing else, this is a welcome reprint, right? Especially since every pack is going to have a mythic, uh, mystical archive card. Did I call this mythical archive? You know what? I don't care what I... I already made the thumbnail. I don't care. Um, exile the top card of your library. You may put that card into your hand unless it has the same name as another card exiled this way. Repeat this process until you put a card into your hand or you exile two cards with the same name, whichever comes first. So essentially, you can play a deck with only two ofs and Tainted Pack, and you can just draw a lot of your uh, a lot of your cards. But you don't actually draw the cards; you just put them in your hand. So the way this is worded, um, uh, sorry, sorry, I, I, I misspoke slightly. Um, you get a specific card, or you can get whatever what you want. This is like Uber Toolbox. So the way this works, right? Like, so um, you wait a minute. Oh, two cards with the same name. Right, okay, yeah. So you exile a card. You don't want that card. You put it uh, you, you put it in exile. You exile another card. Maybe you want that card. You put it in your hands. You're done. This is instant speed, right? Um let's say you don't like that card. You put it in exile. We have we have card named A, card named B. Card named C and card named D. Card name A. If you exile this card. You now have two cards in exile with the same name. And then you don't repeat the process. You get nothing. So you, at that point, you're going to put a card in your hand. I've, I've screwed this card up so much. I th Look, this card, honestly, never play with this card. All right. Oh, no, you, you're just boned. Never mind. If you get another card, eight, you're boned. That's why you only play a deck with one ups. There we go. Uh, we're going to ignore the last however long that was. Uh, Tendrils of Agony. First off, fantastic art. Second of off, uh, second off. Target player loses two life and you gain two life. Storm. Look, I don't know how, um, how prevalent Storm is going to be. Because we don't have we don't have the same level of cantrips as other formats. We don't have the same level of um, of mana creation as other formats. But my gosh, am I excited to try and break this card? Unfortunately, I have no idea how. Chaos Warp. Uh, this is probably just better for Historic Brawl. Um, I guess, I guess for what it's worth, this is another card. It's a permanent card put on the battlefield. Yeah, I guess this is like another card that you can play in that kind of a, a polymorph Lucka deck where you play like um, a couple of really big beefy creatures. Uh, you play Lucka, a bunch of token generators, uh, and then that other kind of chaos effect. Uh, and then this also can just be removal. It's not great, obviously, because you you have to shuffle first and then reveal. Um, and you don't reveal until you hit um, a thing, but I don't know. I don't think it's very good. Never mind. Where am I? Oh my gosh. There's so many. Faithless Looting. A lot of people don't like this art. I'm not going to comment on it. Uh, 
I'm, let me let me rephrase. I'm not going to comment on the drama. Uh, I think this art is creepy, and I think that's the point. Uh, how card recently banned in modern, becoming illegal and historic. What? I mean, like this just helps rack those Arcanist decks a ton. Um, I do like that it helps non-blue um, Reanimator decks. I'd love to play Mardu Reanimator with this. Um, also helps Phoenix decks, which I'm sure my friend uh, James is going to be super happy with. But um, I I don't know. <sighs> okay, so we've seen Inquisition of Cause, like we've seen Brainstorm, and we've seen Faithful to me at this point. And I want to talk about this now before we get to the card. We're not getting Swords to Plowshares. Swords to Plowshares is going to be pre-bans in Historic. But this is fine. Grape Shot's fine. Inquisition's fine. Brainstorm's fine. I don't know if I said Brainstorm already. Who cares? How? How is it? How is that okay? Like, we, we go back to white. We, we had this card already. This card is actually cool. I don't think this card is going to do anything. I don't realistically think this card's going to do anything. Unless I'm missing something, I don't think this card's really going to do anything. White gets essentially nothing. Blue, Brainstorm. Memory Lapse. My, my desire, if if that is actually the thing, uh, this is supposed to be something the hell else. And game is probably not going to do that all that much. Time Warp. Black gets Inquisition, Doomblade. Even Sign of Blood, I think, is worthwhile. Um... And red, red's getting things. Green is getting things. White essentially gets nothing here. Wizards understands that white's not doing great. And yet, whatever. I, whatever. Grape shot. Grape shot. But Justin, it's just one damage. Grape shot's strong. Um, again, I don't know. I don't know how strong the deck is going to be, but we have we have Bergy. Um Bergy. Whenever you cast a spell, add red. To unfair, you don't lose this mana. Okay. You have uh Steamkin. Steam Steamkin. You have Steamkin. Okay. You have these spells. You have things like thr uh well, I guess Thrill of Possibility isn't actually Oops. Thrill of Possibility, I guess, isn't um, card positive. Still, like, you're, you're going to be drawing through um, kind of Garbo. Like, I, I feel like, I feel like you can make an actual, like, an actual combo deck. Like, red-blue, uh, maybe red-black, maybe red-green, actually. But I feel like you could make a legitimate combo deck with great, like with the the core of Grape Shot, Bergy, and uh, Steamkin. Love art. Uh, increasing vengeance. This card is a cool kind of copy of thing. Um, very fun. Probably gonna see some play in a historic brawl. But other than that, meh. same with Mizix's Mizix's Mizzix, mastery. Um, unless we see a big mana. Um, uh, big mana storm so you know maybe you could see a thousand year storm uh, play this card um yeah so so maybe you can do that you can you know grab uh grab extra uh not treacherous terrain whatever the the red like seven mana card from ixalan is that makes a ton of uh, to uh treasure based on your uh, lands uh, you can do that uh you can overload it There's just a bunch of stuff that you can do. Um, it's probably just not good enough, though. Stone Rain. I am stoked for Stone Rain, baby. Uh, turn one, Mana Dork. Turn two, Stone Rain, your opponent. Turn three, blow up another of your opponent's lands. Turn four, blow up another of your opponent's lands. Uh, is um, is Creeping Mold is legal in Historic, right? Creeping Mold. Yeah, it is. Artifact and Shaman Art Lands. Uh, it's not the best... It does have some some value of being able to hit up. Okay, that was weird. Uh, hit other things, but I, I'm just I'm loving Stone Rain, dude. Uh, this is this is gonna be stupid. Historic is going to be can changed. Urza's Rage. I think this is like almost just worse. 
I mean, it costs so much. It is instant. I, I was going to say it's almost worse than um, Jaya's thing. The three mana version that you can kick. Um, but this this can't be countered. I don't know. I mean, Jaya's deals five damage. It doesn't hit face initially. I don't I, I, I just I don't see this card being played. I just don't think it's... Uh, I, I don't think the kicker cost is low enough. Green. Abundant Harvest. Choose land or non-land. Wait, what? This card has been printed before. Choose land or non-land. Reveal cards from the top of your library into a reveal card of the chosen type. Uh, put that card into your hand, the rest in the bottom. Uh, this card's cool. I, I don't know... I don't know necessarily uh, if it has a place anywhere. I just think it's cool. Reasonable card. Harmonize. Bruh. Harmonize. Also, I... This is the same artist that did uh, Faithless Looting. Has the same style and everything, but people aren't upset about this. I don't understand people. Uh, four mana, green spell, draw three cards. First things first. Brawl. Second. This... Do, does Blue doesn't have any four mana draw three spells in Historic right now, right? Because I feel like this just makes Blue Green ramp a little better. You just, you're good old four mana, draw three. Is this... I'm trying to think if this has, like, a place anywhere else. I, I, I don't think so. Um, Elves doesn't want this because they would rather have creature-based card draw. I think the main place for this is green-blue ramp. In Historic Brawl. Yeah. Crows and Grip. Historic Brawl, but... Very welcome. Uh, your opponent just can't deal with, uh, can't can't respond. You get to just blow up a thing. I love it. Love to see it. Primal Command. Very interesting. Probably just for Brawl. Love the art. Uh, gain seven. Put a thing. Ba essentially bounce a thing. Uh, shuffle shuffle graveyard. Search for a creature. It's it's not it's not the strongest of the commands. <laughs> not by a long shot. Regrowth though. Regrowth is stupid. Why is regrowth stupid? Well, Regrowth um, can just return. I don't know. There's, there's some card. There's some card that Regrowth can return. I think I think it might uh, might be called Time Warp. Doesn't exile itself. Why not? Weather the storm. I love this card. And do you know why I love this card? Not because not because it says storm. But because it says gain three life. I'm going to try and make a storm deck that uses Weather the Storm. And veto. We're gonna gain life. Target opponent loses that much life. And the thing is, you don't have to cast as many spells as you would a grape shot, because this deals more at a single time. Now, I've already made on my channel, and you should be able to find it still on my Aether Hub. Uh, I've already made a deck that utilizes veto and life gain spells. There are plenty of them that are actually relatively cheap. So now we get to essentially. Uh, play play a little bit of control game, you know, play some removal, play Binding of the Old Gods, try and make a lot of mana. And then essentially you go, um, once you have enough mana, Veto. Um, there's like a one mana spell that gains you like eight or something like that. Um, literally just play a couple of those and this, bada bing, bada boom, they're dead. Uh, just really awesome, really fun. Uh, I like this way better than Grape Shot. Electrolyze. Is Counter Burn finally going to be a thing? I don't know, but we'll find out. Uh, yeah, I... I Electrolyze is very cool. The issue, like, it, it's played in modern, or at least it was the last time I checked, which is a while ago, because, frankly, as, as soon as Birth and Pod got banned, my interest died over time. Um, it has, I guess, like, I'm trying to think of, like, the best creatures that we have for an Electrolyze style deck. But it's tempo deck, essentially. This would be, like, blue-red tempo. We have... The, the two mana fairy drake thing. We have a few of those one mana cards. You know, you, you have the, the the normal like mono blue tempo stuff. But it's not, you know, it's not Delver, right? Like, like what else does red give you? We don't, we didn't get lightning bolt. So what else does red give you? I don't think we have enough for that just yet. Uh, but I could see Electrolyze alongside Ionize in 
in some form of counter burn deck. I, I think I think that has a, a possible place. Lightning Helix. Praise the sun. Uh, Jeskai Control, maybe back on the menu. Uh, Mardu Control, this helps a lot uh, for Mardu Control, being able to, to kill a thing and gain life or have a, a extra reach. And then, of course, Mardu Burn. Oh, I, I don't think Red White has enough for Burn. And you might be saying, like, why, why, why play Mardu? Literally this card. Maybe some sideboard interaction as well uh, to stop some, some people from doing stuff. Um, but mainly... Lightning Helix. It's, it's an incredibly efficient card. Um, compare this to something like um, Sovereign's Bite. Sovereign's Bite essentially does the same thing. Now you have more of those. What that means is you have an easier time racing your opponent since you're likely not going to have the best of boards. You're probably going to still want to play a few good uh, one mana and two mana creatures, but being able to just kind of burn your opponent being able to kind of just like burn your opponent and not necessarily care about what they're doing is going to be great. I can't wait. Putrefy. Uh, we have Mortify. Now we have Putrefy. I love it. Um, the issue is we have Mythos of Nethroi, which kind of makes both of these uh, obsolete. Um, uh, it, it's it's good. Uh, this helps the historic brawl deck of just like removal dot deck. Uh, so that's, that's fine, I suppose. Now we get to the banned cards. Remember, there are seven banned cards. The first one is Swords to Plowshares. Why? The thing is, they could have printed Path to Exile. Path to Exile, still, still considered too strong by wizards for some stupid king reason. But we could at least have that. I understand Swords to Plowshares is essentially the strongest removal. But when you, when you accept and recognize that white needs help, why are you going to slap to the face like this? Some people would say, with Therix, Swords of Plowshares would make blue-white control decks too strong. Okay. I don't know if it would. Um... I guess I guess I guess one of my big issues is Wizards is injecting so much into historic. Why ban anything? Right? Like like why ban any of these cards? Even the ones that you know are gonna be broken? Let us play with them. And you get the thing is, like they, they announced, okay, like these these seven cards are gonna be pre-banned. They could have instead say, um, we are looking at a specific number of cards. That after, after like, one or two weeks, literally just one or two weeks, after one or two or two weeks on Arena, we will be banning some of them. We are, we are certain that they're going to make a mess, but we wanted we wanted to let all of you play with the cards that you open in packs. We wanted to let you do this. We, maybe maybe they even say, we're not going to reverse you wild cards for these. Sure. Essentially, people, like, don't craft them. You shouldn't be crafting these anyway. Like, a lot of these are going to be rares and mythics. Um, open them. Just, just tr hope you open them because it's probably not going to be worth crafting uh, unless you're like really looking to make a storm deck or whatever. Could have done that. They didn't. I'm sad. Counterspell. <sighs> counterspell would be, would be too good. I, I, I do think counterspell would probably be too good. Uh, again, I, I would have liked to be proven that that it was too good, but. I think I I think that it would make tempo and blue white control nigh unstoppable. I think those would be like the two decks. Um, yeah, dark ritual also obviously broken. This fucking dark ritual, dude. One mana, add three. We have tendrils of agony in this format. Excuse me. Obviously, too strong. Let us see it. Let us feel the power. For what it's worth, you can still play these cards in direct matches. What do I do from time to time? I challenge players. I wonder if my players are going to enjoy playing a nonsense format where you can play all of these cards. <laughs> like essentially, no banless historic. Uh, I, I will likely try and start doing some no ban banless historic stuff. I think that'd be fun. Demonic Tutor. Uh, this is also going to be banned in Historic Brawl. 
uh, it, it's been historic and historic brawl. I wonder if it would be too. It costs two less than Massimo's acquisition, but Massimo's acquisition can get stuff from your graveyard or from your uh, sideboard. I think, we, yeah, we have Grim Tutor right now. Grim, Grim Tutor doesn't see any play. It, Grim Tutor might see play um, now that we have some Storm cards, but I still doubt it. I don't I don't know if Demonic Tutor would break Historic. But I'm definitely going to try and find out. Lightning Bolt. I don't think, I don't think Burn would be too good if they added Lightning Bolt. Um, honestly, the Arcanist deck would be too good if we added Lightning Bolt. That, that's my main thing. I, I think that the Arcanist deck would, uh, uh, get a lot of value from Lightning Bolt. Uh, but we're, we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens in, uh, no banless historic. Channel. This card's actually broken. Uh, Channel Fireball is named after, in part, this card. Uh, for those of you who are new who may not, uh, know the story, Channel Fireball essentially uh, is, you cast Channel right uh anytime you could act essentially you can pay one life to get a colorless mana right so you cast channel you have a red source you pay essentially all of your life but one and you fireball your opponent i guess t technically speaking you have to have two other mana sources uh so that you can make x equals 20 uh but yeah you you literally can just channel fireball just die so i'm gonna cast channel i'm gonna cast fireball i'm gonna go to one my opponent you're dead uh, understandable. Imagine, for example, we are in... God, God this is legal nowhere. <laughs> it's restricted vintage. Um, what do you print this then? I don't know. Imagine, in historic, right? We don't have... I mean, we, uh, we have fireball type things, but it's not, it's not the same. Because what you could do instead is uh, turn two, channel uh, Ugin. That's only eight life. If you want, Take 10 more. Cast, uh, em uh, cast, uh, em uh, Ulamog. Did I say Ulamog first? I meant Ugin. Cast Ugin. It's only eight. Cast Ulamog. That's, you can, you can be at two. Uh, look, look, even if your opponent, like, went first, you're still cutting them off of two lands and have, like, two things. Unless they're playing Burn, you've won that game on turn two. So, it should be banned. But let us play with it. Natural Order. Sack a thing, get a thing. Uh, this card is played in Elves decks. Um... And they would, this would be too good in elf decks, essentially. Like, your natural order, you sack an elf into a um, uh, hoof. There it is. You know, your opponent dies. In fact, this this probably is supposed to be hoof. Okay, so those were all of the cards that were banned. Um, this one, kind of obvious. This, this is a, a combo kill that a lot of people don't like. Obvious combo kill. I don't necessarily understand exactly why Lightning Bolt's banned. Uh, Demonic Tutor, I can see it. Like, it's the strongest tutor. Dark Ritual, understandable. Like, the fast mana is bad. Uh, Counterspell, I can see it, but meh. Swords, what? Well, this doesn't belong with these. Swords did nothing wrong. So now we're getting some other cards. These are just the other cards that um, they're they're reprinting, essentially, uh, that we already have in Sork. I'm just, I just want to talk about the selection here. Porch the Second Sun, uh, very interesting win con. Uh, I, think, I think this is a reasonable thing to have. I don't understand this art, but it's fine. I, I really like the kind of surreal style. Defiant Strike. It could have been something else. I guess. I guess what could it have been? Because they also did. Uh, we'll get to that actually in a second. I, you know what? I think Defiant Strike is probably fine. I, I, as as one of the white reprints, that's probably fine. Um, Wizards does not respect us. I I legitimately believe that Wizards thought this this was a like insanely strong card. This card, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. I say it. I've said it once. I'll say it a, a, a thousand times. This card is garbage. This card is actual trash. It's sorcery, it's two white pips, and it doesn't matter what you exile, you can get anything. So even if they have instant sorceries and lands, they can still put a land down. Like, worst case scenario for them is they put a land down. Which, for what it's worth, you're probably going to be getting rid of something more valuable than a land. But at that point, you're essentially, right, essentially... Casting a way worse path to exile. 
I, I do not understand why this card is any of the way it is. Honestly, even at one mana, still sorcery, I don't think I'd play this card. I, I don't. One mana sorcery, I don't think I'd play this card. This 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 downside, I understand. Sword supply share downside essentially is nothing. Right? You do not care if your opponent is at a hundred life. As long as you're alive, you can put them to zero. Or you win without um, dealing damage. Uh, Path to Exile literally gives them a land, which if they went first, they're now essentially up two lands from you. This card is way too off in the wrong direction. They could have limited it to um, a, a, per a permanent that shares a card type with it. At the very least, they could have done that. And then maybe it'd be playable. God's Willing. Reasonable. God's Willing's a, a cool, good card. Fair. Revitalize. Uh, yeah. Remember, these can only be instant sorceries. So you can't have something like... Um, gosh, what is that thing called? Uh, glass Casket or whatever. For white instant sorcery, I don't know. Maybe idyllic tutor would have been cool to replace one of one of these lesser white ones. Uh, blue negate. Uh, we we've had a bunch of essence scatters at this point. I think no, we've had a bunch of negates. We haven't had a bunch of essence scatter. I'd I would like to see essence scatter. Yeah. Uh, opt. Uh, I mean, other than Brainstorm, I guess Opt is kind of the best filtery spell on Arena. That's fine. St strategic Planning, this does actually seem to see play. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if this sees play in, um, in more decks in Historic going forward. Reasonable. Whirlwind Denial. Once again, I feel like Wizards expected this card to be stronger than it is. It's not terrible, don't get me wrong. But it might have been better just to have, um the Surveil Counterspell, or the, um... Oh, uh, Dissipate. No. No. Dis... Not Dissolve. Disallow. I think Disallow would have been better. Yeah, I think it would have been cooler to get a different version of Disallow. Yeah, that's just me, though. Agonizing Remorse, uh... It sees some fringe use, but like, why would you print this when you're when you're giving us Inquisition of Kozilek? Like? like at this point, Agonizer Remorse probably not going to see all that much play, um, even though it's you saw very little to no play right now. Uh, I think they already gave. I think they did do duress. Why are they both discard spells? This like it could have been more interesting here. That's played. Uh... I don't know how many blacks we've actually played right now. Oh, um... Uh, Crumble to Dust. That would have been an interesting card. Duress. Reprint of Duress. I think Duress is totally fine. Uh, eliminate. It's, it's fine. It's actually pretty cool art. Reasonable reasonable reprint. It, it's either this or Heartless Act, essentially. Um, Village Rights. I hate this card just because of the Rakdos Arcanist, but I think Village Rights has played so much that it's, it's reasonable to have here. Claim the Firstborn. I don't care that this has been printed. I still think this card should be banned. Which means I'm upset that they've used this here. <laughs> Infuriate. Do, do people play Infuriate right now? I guess maybe they play this in, um, why not Brute Force? Because we don't, because Brute Force is not the thing. Um, I, I, maybe they play this in the Kill Fiend deck. I, I don't actually know the Kill Fiend deck all that much, but I, it's fine. It's whatever. Uh, shock, sure. If you're not gonna let us have bolt, they could have like, if they didn't want to give us bolt, they could have given us like lava spike, right? Uh, whatever. Third possibility, yeah. This card sees some play and is going to see more play uh, with faithful suiting in the format. You might think that they should see less, but I, I think this is just to be like faithful suiting's uh, five through six or, or five through eight. Adventurous Impulse. It, it's fine. I just feel like this card was uh, reprinted 
like more recently. I, I don't know. I would like to see something from like Ravnica here. Uh, maybe Bond. I, I would like to see a, like this artist interpretation of Bond of whatever the blue, the green one is. Uh, Cultivate. Yeah, you put it in Historic and, and it's played enough that I think this is reasonable. Uh, my main issue though is um, my man's is holding the scythe wrong. Uh, <laughs> looks like he's going to actually kill himself. These fruit are disturbing and I don't like them. Snakeskin Veil. I don't think this card sees play. It also, like, it just got debuted recently. But this is, like, strong anime anime vibes here, and I'm, I'm for it. D-Spark. I like Mark Teden's work. I do not like what he did to my, my boy. Like, how how are his horns this big and his body this small? Like, they did my man's dirty, and I, I don't appreciate that. Reasonable, reasonable card to reprint, though. And then Gross Spiral. Look. Gross Spiral. Absolutely played enough to to, to be uh, given this treatment. But how do you beat Seb McKinnon's art? This, don't, don't get me wrong, this is pretty sick. It reminds me a lot of Samurai Jack, actually. Uh, but Seb McKinnon's art is pretty sick. This has been a fucking hour of me talking about cards that are coming to Historic in some amount of time that's been too long. Uh, I'm upset about some of the cards. I... The, at the end of the day, this is going to shake up Historic. Um, Historic hasn't been boring, per se. It's just, it just hasn't felt fun. Um, I, I haven't really been having a lot of fun with Historic, and I'm, I'm really hoping that this injection of things, even though, let's be honest, this is like 30-something cards before we get to the, the banned cards, right? It, it's 30-something cards. Maybe 10 of those are going to, like, legitimately uh, change the format. But that's still... That's still, like, the, the amount that a normal set contributes. Um, at least recently. Uh, I don't know. I'm super stoked. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, let me know which of these cards you are most interested in uh, playing with. Uh, for me, it's probably going to be Ephemerate. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably Ephemerate. Um, I don't think there's anything else besides the... Um, The, the jank combo that's going to be uh, super fun for me. But yeah, let me let me know in the comments. Uh, I have a, pay, uh, a PO box for Sammy Nonsense. I'd like to thank my patrons. This is this has not uh, been changed. We do have a new patron. Uh, I haven't pushed them up because I haven't recorded in a long time and uh, probably will not be recording for another uh, bit because, uh, as I've said recently, I am focusing on my studies. Um, thanks for all of the support with that, by the way. Um, yeah, I just figured I'd do this, this little video. Um, yeah, until next time, I'll be one.